Hey everyone, so for my manuscript project, I chose uh, Native Guard by Natasha Trethway, and here we go. Natasha Trethway was born in Gulfport, Mississippi in 1966, actually on Confederate Memorial Day, uh, which is a rotating holiday landing on the last Monday in April, Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. It's different, different dates, different places, uh, different states. Uh, she served as a poet laureate 2012-2014, uh, two consecutive terms. Uh, the version of this book that I got came out during her first term, but it was originally published much earlier than that. Um, she's the first lawyer to simultaneously serve at the U.S. and state level. Uh, she's also very few, one of the very few women laureates and one of the even fewer women of color laureates, uh, joining the current laureate, uh, Joy Harjo. She's the author of five collections, Domestic Work, Philia, Native Guard, uh, which this presentation is about. This book also won the Pulitzer Prize in 2007. Uh, Thrall, and most recently, Monument, Poems New and Selected. Monument is a poem in Native Guard. I'm not sure if it's the titular poem in Monument or not. I haven't read it. Um, hope to very soon. Uh, she is also the author of the Memorial Drive, A Daughter's Memoir, and Beyond Katrina, A Meditation on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, so Native Guard, like many manuscripts, is broken up into three parts. Uh, the first part is all about Trethway's mother and Trethway dealing with her mother's death. Um, so there's moments where poems where she's still alive and, and, and a graveyard blues is um, through, from the first two she's alive and then the graveyard blues uh, is where she's passed away. And then the later ones are her kind of remembering her mother or dealing with the grief and pain of, of having lost her. Uh, but each part is preceded by an epigraph, which uh, gives a pretty clear hint at what uh, that part is going to be about. So part one is preceded by, uh, I'm going to meet my mother. She says she'd meet me when I come. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. And uh, for sake of time, I chose to uh, focus on just a few couple uh poems from each section. So for this one, I chose Graveyard Blues, What is Evidence and After Your Death. Graveyard Blues, uh, as the title might hint, is a blues poem. Uh, blues poems usually follow some sort of pattern. They're usually the template, the specific, the, the specific pattern is uh, uh, the first two lines make the same statement in slightly varied form, and the third, third line of the stanza uh, offers an alternative to that statement or an ironic alternative to that statement, some maybe sometimes just a different way of looking at that statement before, but it's reworded, you know, using totally new words. Um, Trethway, Graveyard Blues does follow that pattern uh, as seen here below. The road going home is pocked with holes. That home going road's always full of holes. Though we slow down, time's wheel still rolls. Uh, the next one I chose is What is Evidence? Uh, this poem is about. Uh, it's set after Graveyard Blues, so it's, it's not um, set when her mother was alive. It's set after her passing, uh, and it's Trethway kind of remembering uh, that her mother was a survivor of domestic abuse. And um, it's a uh, striking poem, to, and uh, I, I thought that it would be best to view it in its entirety rather than me quoting it and trying to uh, mansplain surviving domestic abuse. Uh, I think it's better to just honor Trethway's uh, empowerment of, of writing this piece itself. Um, so not the fleeting bruises she'd cover with makeup, a dark patch as if in parenthesis of a scope she pressed her eye too close to looking for a way out, nor the quiver and the voice she'd steady leaning into a pot of bones on the stove, not the teeth she wore in place of her own or the official document its seal and smeared signature, fading already, the edges wearing. Not the tiny marker with its dates, her name, abstract as history, only the landscape of her body, splintered clavicle, pierced temporal, her thin bones settling a bit each day, the way all things do. Um, I say it's, it's a powerful poem because as many of you probably know that um, when who were subjected to domestic abuse are often told to like elicit a bunch of proof and evidence of it and you know justify your case and um 
Treadway's kind of saying here is like the only proof that you need is, is is the landscape of her mother's body. You know, the landscape of the survivor's body, the, you know, the the damage that is done. That's the only proof and evidence that you need. It's you don't need the evidence of her covering it up and kind of um, dealing with the day to day, and you don't need the evidence of her trauma and depression of uh, of you know leaning over the kitchen and pot and pot with bones and stuff. You don't need her. You don't need the documents. The documents aren't evidence. The documents are uh, simply that, you know, they're abstract, right? They're, they're uh, the evidence is the body. Um, uh, it's a really powerful poem. It took, I had to read it a few times, uh, not to understand it, just to move past how uh, striking it was and um, really see what Trethway is doing with the piece itself. After your death is uh, Trethway, you kind of come to terms with uh, the loss of her mother. And you know, when you lose somebody, you kind of realize just, just how much space they occupied in your life and in, in the world around them. And um, you know, what do we do? What do we do with that space? How do we fill that space? Um, so it starts out with, uh, like I said, four stanzas, three lines each. A lot of a lot of her a lot of her poems do have three stanz three lines per stanza. Um, I, I guess she just thinks that that's a good delivery point to move move forward. Um, so there's this really cool imagery of uh, a fig being hollowed out by insects, um, which was something that her mother used to prevent. Right, so she's not there anymore to prevent it. Uh, the figs are being taken over, right? Right, right fruits are being taken over and hollowed out um, by insects. And um, it's a really beautiful juxtaposition of um, the, the, the fruit itself being hollowed out and uh, being hollowed out by loss, just as Trethway has been hollowed out by this loss. Um, but it does end on, um, I hesitate to say hopeful, but hopeful line. Uh, tomorrow the bowl I have yet to fill you know there's a lot of promise in that word yet right like we we know because of what she's told us and what she wrote like we know we know the insects are taking over the ripe figs we know um the jars that are supposed to be filled with preserves are left empty we know that there's um her mother's clothes are left in the closet or there's fruit in the bowl that's bruised because her mother's not there to do these things and or, or wear the clothes, like her mother's left this space unoccupied, but um, we don't know what tomorrow is, right? It's just neither does she. She doesn't know if that bowl's gonna be filled. It's not filled yet, but it could be. So it ends on that kind of um, promise, I think is a, good, is a good word to say for it. And uh, it's kind of Trethway writing, her, writing herself into the next step of the process, writing herself into moving forward. And I think it's just a beautiful, Beautiful, beautiful way to do it. Um, but for part two, focuses all on Mississippi, and it's preceded by a uh, quote from Nina Simone's song "Mississippi Goddamn." Everybody knows about Mississippi. Um, it's the shortest section as far as number of poems, but it's the longest section as far as page number. Um, because "Native Guard," the titular poem, which is the only poem I'm going over for this section in the presentation. Um, it's multiple pages. Uh, it's a pretty long poem, but it's beautiful. Um, it goes through just different places, different moments in Mississippi history and um, kind of telling the history. Later, she goes in the next section, she goes into like how she was taught history uh, and a couple of different poems. So this is her telling Mississippi history. Uh, but for Native Guard, it's preceded by an uh, uh, epigraph from Frederick Douglass. If this war is to be forgotten, I ask in the name of all things sacred, what shall man remember? And uh, Native Guard, uh, as I hope you can infer, uh, is the titular poem of this manuscript. Uh, it is the, like I said, the longest poem in the piece and uh, it has 10 journal-like entries uh, dated from 18, November 1862 to 1865. Uh, it's a first-person account of the Native Guards in the role in the Civil War. And who the hell were the Native Guards? Well, the Native Guards were uh, the first Black regiment enlisted in the Union Army. 
uh, mainly they guarded prison camps and um, did like kind of administrative work if that existed in, in mass in the Civil War. Uh, they didn't see combat till very late in the in the war, and uh, they're ultimately betrayed by the Union Army, uh, killed. A lot of them killed by the Union Army, uh, who were supposed to be fighting for their freedom. Uh, the first regiment, there's one, two, and three throughout the years of the Civil War. The first regiment was mainly made up of escaped slaves who enlisted in the Union Army to uh, you know, fight against their direct oppressors and their own slave owners, right? Uh, later, free Creole men joined the Union, but those men converted to the Union after fighting for the Confederate Army under the same name uh, of the of Native Guards, um, which makes the history, looking it up, kind of figuring out uh, context for this poem, make it kind of difficult, you know, because you, you're trying to figure out which side she's actually talking about, but you, it's pretty clear she's talking about the Union Army. She mentions Union, union men, but um, having it having a Confederate troop listed as Native Guard does kind of muddy the water a little bit when you're looking up the research. But either way, um, Native Guards were not listed as infantry. As I said, they didn't see combat until much later. But even then, they were still listed as supply units. Um, they were not listed as soldiers. They're infantry soldiers. So uh, after the 3rd Regiment dissolved, the Native Guards became the 73rd or 74th Regiment Infantry of the United States Color Troops, which is uh, better but not by much of what they were called just before that, which is of course the Afri. Uh, that happened in the 1863, uh, brief stint of that, um, mainly used to exile them and alienate, alienate them from what is American, right? So further, further keep, them, keep them at arm's length. Um, Native Guard, the whole poem is, written in iambic pentameter. So it's very conversational. Like I said, it's, it's set up as a journal entries. Um, so the, it's, it's uh, 10 syllables a line, right? 14 lines per entry, 10 entries total. Um, it does have, uh, Trethway has an ingenious way to thread all these entries together. Um, starting with the Douglas quote of, if this war is to be forgotten, I ask in the name of all things sacred, what shall man remember? Um, the final, the last sentence of a stanza or last sentence, last sentence of an entry is repeated as the first sentence of the next entry. So the Douglas quote is repeated in the first entry, which is November 1862, as truth be told, I do not want to forget anything of my former life. And um, so she has this really cool way of doing that. There's some, sometimes she plays on the word, sometimes it's a direct, uh, exact copy. Um, I actually take that back. Only one I found was a direct copy. Um, but she does really cool things with it. Uh, December 1862 entry ends with on every page, his story intersecting with my own, which speaks of like this soldier apparently found, raided a Confederate house and abandoned place and found a journal. And he's like writing on top, like in the spaces between the, in the spaces between the lines, writing on top of the other person's words. So he's telling his story and just below him is, is somebody else's story. Uh, so there's a really cool image, but January 1863 begins with, oh, how history intersects my own birth upon a ship called the Northern Star, and I'm delivered into a new life. Um, important note here, birth in that sentence is B-E-R-T-H, which is a place on a ship, um, but it's kind of has that duality in the sentence because there's I'm delivered into, into a new life, like B-A-R-T-H. Uh, pretty cool play on word there, but his story and history, I think that's a really cool way to um, repeat the statement and thread and connect these two entries without doing a direct quote and, and a perfect copy. Uh, the only one that she does a perfect copy for is uh, March 1863 and April 1863. So the March entry ends with, uh, when men die, we eat their share of heart attack. And the April entry begins with, when men die, we eat their share of heart attack. Now, um, one, the March entry is said by a Confederate prisoner and the April entry is said by uh, the man writing this journal, so it's a union person. So there's, you know, there's a gap there, but it connects these two entries. And you know, uh, so she just does amazing work to, <laughs> to connect these things. And um, I didn't really realize I could pick out iambic pentameter uh, as I was reading, but I guess I can at this point in the semester, which is pretty cool moving forward. Um, most of it is most of this poem is uh, Treadway's invention based on her 
knowledge of the Native Guards and Civil War history in Mississippi and Louisiana. But um, certain details are taken from sources, but mainly the main source that she used was, thank God my regiment African won the Civil War diary of Colonel Nathan W. Daniels, who was the Colonel of the 1st Regiment of Native Guards. Um, and the eight, mainly in the eight to, in the April 1863 entry, which I just read from, it mentions uh, an unfortunate incident and that their name shall deck the page of history. Uh, that incident speaks is, is about that uh, that betrayal that I spoke about earlier. Um, Native guards, Native guard soldiers were uh, running away and retreating from Confederate forces because they were outnumbered. They were running back to Union ships, and uh, Union soldiers open fired on them. Um, killing a bunch of them. They didn't kill a single Confederate chaser. They only killed uh, only killed their own men. And when um, Confederate leaders asked uh, General Banks of the Union if he wanted to come collect his dead from that incident, um, he said, I have no dead there. So it kind of just goes to about, speaks on, uh, you know, the dehumanization of, of these men and how they were treated and uh, ostracized even in an army that was supposed to be fighting for their freedom. Um, yeah. The complexity of the Civil War never ceases to amaze me. Um, so Trethway does a, a, a brilliant job here finding what voice to talk through and um, what place in history to speak on. I think, I think it's just beautiful. Um, the final entry in this poem, uh, again, I think needs to be viewed in its entirety. <laughs> Uh, it is a. Uh, it depicts uh, a massacre. It depicts a, it's just an absolutely terrible, terrible scene. Um, I'll just read it. 1865. These are things which must be accounted for: slaughter under the white flag of surrender, black massacre at Port at Fort Pillow. Our new name, the Corpse d'Afrique, words that take the native from our claim, mossbacks and freedmen exiles in their own homeland, the diseased, the maimed, every lost limb and what remains, phantom ache, memory haunting an empty sleeve, the hog eaten at Gettysburg, unmarked in their graves, all the dead letters unanswered, untold stories of those that time will render mute, beneath battlefields, green again, the dead molder, a scaffolding of bone we tread upon, forgetting, truth be told. I mean, damn. Uh, if you've ever visited a Civil War battleground, battle site, it's, uh, I mean, it's set up like a park, right? Like there's picnic tables, there's a gift shop, there's tours, there's little flat, there's little American flags that, you know, parade along the, 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 the driveway up to the parking lots at times a year. And there's people walking around taking pictures and um, kids running around the green fields. And it's hard to imagine an image like the one on this screen here in a place like that. It's hard to imagine uh, hogs roaming the battlefield eating the dead at Gettysburg, which they did, I guess. Um, and it's, it, it, we definitely don't imagine those left behind, you know, those wounded who had to get their arms amputated or those uh, haunted by the sounds and the, and, and the images that they experienced during their time fighting. Um, we learn, a, we, we see a real pretty up version of it when we go visit a battleground. And um, I think Trethway shatters that glass, uh, you know, fantastically here. It is a, I'll use her word, it's a haunting image to read this and uh, to, to imagine just the, the, uh, the absolute devastation of life that, that occurred to these men. Uh, the image here is a, uh, of the native guards it's actually depicts i guess this man right here would have been him that's the first black officer uh one of the first black officers to die in the civil war and his death sparked a lot of enlistment and recruitment for um, future black soldiers in the civil war in the union army specifically um, but moving on from uh that into what is uh not a happier note uh, part three is about the South and relationships with the South. And um, it's preceded by Walt Whitman quote, Oh, magnet South, Oh, glistening perfumed South, my South, Oh, quick metal, rich blood, impulse and love, good and evil, 
all dear to me. And uh, if, if uh, these epigraphs are supposed to set up what uh, the part is about, it this is again, it's about the relationship to the, between of, of Southerners and their region. You know, Trethway is a uh, is a um, mixed race. Her father's white, her mother's black, and um, so she inhabits uh, herself a complex history of, of the region. And um, I think everybody who grew up in the South has a, a relationship like that, right? And as in pastoral, uh, which I think is a beautiful uh, poem itself, but, but of how ingenious of it to have pastoral as the first poem in a section that's uh, whose epigraph is uh, a Whitman quote, who's known for pastoral images of nature. Um, but pastoral is, you know, we, we learn a real pretty up version of history here in the South. And we don't learn the stuff like the Native Guard in 1865. You know, we don't learn that stuff in schools. And, um, you know, as a, as a white man in the South who uh, has white men all through my family tree who, who were born and raised in the South. And um, luckily, you know, I have um, ancestors who were Quaker and played, have very specific good history in the south but my you know there's other sides of families right there's people in my family tree who um did um average acts but despicable nonetheless and you know we all have this complicated relationship with this place and um the end of the first the end of pastoral ends is a reforming of um a statement made by Faulkner's one of Faulkner's characters in Absalom Aslam, uh, which Faulkner used said, I don't hate the South, I don't hate it. And um Pastor Trethway turns those into questions as like someone asking her, it's like you don't hate the South, they ask, you don't hate it. Like this uh this disbelief that this mixed race woman who has been insulted and 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 subjected to racism throughout her life, uh still loves where she came from and still wants to be a part of that community uh hey just be it's, it's it's something that like i don't even think as southerners we can explain and we definitely can't explain it to anyone who's outside of our region outside of our specific communities like there's just um women does the best it's good and evil it's all dear to me like there's something that ties us to this place and there's something that just connects us to it and um it's not despite the bad stuff it's with the bad stuff um it's it, it's this kind of like um like i'll speak personally like i except my half family members you look in if you you go back in any white person's family trees who has history in the south and you're gonna uh find terrible things right but does that make you feel guilty for being southern yourself i don't really think so i think that's kind of what trethway is speaking at here like it it is part of her um even though there's been certain instances where the where the the love was not reciprocated, uh, but for this one, for this section, I chose uh, to have Trethway, a video Trethway reading a poem called "Incident." Um, it's a pantoum, and this poem here really solidified the form for me and helped me when I was writing mine. It's also it was also in our module, uh, but this is from 2014 when she was uh, poet laureate. Incident. We tell the story every year, how we peered from the windows, shades drawn, though nothing really happened, the charred grass now green again. We peered from the windows, shades drawn, at the cross trussed like a Christmas tree, the charred grass still green. Then we darkened our rooms, lit the hurricane lamps. At the cross, trust like a Christmas tree, a few men gathered white as angels in their gowns. We darkened our rooms and lit hurricane lamps, the wicks trembling in their fonts of oil. It seemed the angels had gathered white men in their gowns. When they were done, they left quietly. No one came. The wicks trembled all night in their fonts of oil. By morning, the flames had all dimmed. When they were done, the men left quietly. No one came. Nothing really happened. By morning, all the flames had dimmed. 
we tell the story every year. And like I said, this um, pet poem really helped me uh, figure out what the hell to do <laughs> trying to write a band to him. Uh, the, I, some of the other samples I was reading that week was uh, the repetitions were perfect, right? They were, they were identical. Um, hers was the first one that I saw where they where she where she adapted them for context and kind of changed them a little bit and um, made them fit what she was trying to say. So you have forward momentum uh, in a poem that repeats and kind of could have redundancies. It probably should have redundancies. And, uh, how do you how do you repackage the same image in a new way? Um, she's a great reader of her own work, obviously uh, better than I could ever imagine to be. But moving on, incident maybe. Uh, elegy for the native guards um it's the last one i chose because in dealing with native guard the collection i figured why why the hell not focus on native guards the poems um it's epigraph is from alan tate now that the salt of their blood stiffens the saltier oblivion of the sea and uh, again just like native guard the poem it is uh written in iambic pentameter except for one line uh and that I found in the second stanza has nine syllables. I'm not really sure the significance of that, but I was able to figure out that it's it's shorter. It's one syllable shorter. Um, but it's a the first. It's four stanzas of uh, six lines each, and um, it depicts a uh, Trethway going to uh, Ship Island, which is where the Native Guards there were a base there for uh, guarded a Confederate prison, but on this island. Uh, in, I think it's in Louisiana, there's a, the Daughters of Confederacy have a plaque. So it's only, it's only, the only people that are memorialized there are Confederate soldiers and uh, not, a, not a single mention of the Native Guards. Uh, now in my PowerPoint here, I have no repetition or rhyme scheme, but that's somewhat of a lie. Uh, the first three stanzas don't rhyme. The final stanza, which is the elegy itself, uh, which is, um, the only thing that's kind of specifically for the native guards, the rest of it is kind of setting up the scene so you know what you're looking at when you read this last uh, stanza rhymes and it's beautifully rhymed. I'll go ahead and read it. All the grave markers, all the crude headstones, water lost, now fish dart among their bones, and we listen for what the waves intone. Only the fort remains, near 40 feet high, round, unfinished, half open to the sky. The elements, wind, rain god's deliberate eye and um again yeah, that's um that's that's for the native guards but it's uh it's the only one that rhymes it's beautiful by the way like i said it's it's got a uh the same iambic throughout the rest of it um i think um trethway in publishing this and writing this is creating her own sort of plaque for the Native Guards, like the, that's the purpose of this collection. It's the purpose of these two poems is to kind of shine a light on um, the important role that these soldiers played in the Civil War and then the battle against the Confederacy, um, and specifically in the South. You know, it's it's a it's 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 a in this time specifically, it's 2021. You know, we're trying to find new ways to amplify and, and empower voices that were uh, disenfranchised and silenced prior to, to this time. And, um, you know, I think it's just a really cool bit of history to, to learn more about. And, you know, it's kind of sending me down rabbit holes of uh, other Civil War histories that, that were just shielded from me in my childhood. Uh, but that's my presentation. Thank you all for sitting through it.